what is the simplest expression for uh, t prime as a function of t that would satisfy the conditions from 1 to 3? Uh, well, it certainly is true that it cannot be the case that t prime is a constant because it clearly isn't. The t prime is going to depend on the difference between uh, temperature of a body and temperature of the environment. So then the simplest function, as usual, is going to be uh, a linear function. And uh, in fact, the simplest expression is going to look like this. So again, linear function. Uh, linear function uh, which has to satisfy these three conditions that uh, t prime is equal to zero when t is equal to te. It's positive if t is greater than t. Uh, and uh, it's negative if t greater, is greater than t, and it's negative if t is less than t. Uh, so then uh, the proposed expression might be uh, t prime is equal to uh, some coefficient k times t minus t. Let's see if that works or not. If t is equal to t, then this is zero, so this is good. If t is uh, less than t, uh, then t minus t would be negative uh, times k. How should we choose our k? If t is less than t, we want t prime to be positive. So if t minus t is negative, we want k to be negative, or k is positive, but we have to put the minus sign in front of k. Uh, and so then let's test what happens if uh, t is uh, greater than T, if temperature is greater than the temperature of the environment, then the body is going to lose heat, so T prime should be negative. And indeed, here, if T minus T is positive, K, as usual, is a positive constant, so T prime will be negative. So K is greater than zero. And so this is called Newton's law of cooling, and we need to solve, then, to determine temperature of the body, uh, we need to solve uh, an initial value problem uh, that is going to look like this. It's this equation that I just written, t prime equal to minus k t minus t. Uh, and then temperature at the time zero is equal to some initial temperature t zero. Uh, now, once again, the equation itself, if you look at it, uh, it has t prime and it has t, uh, and both appear in a linear way, so therefore this is a linear uh, OD of the first order. Uh, so I should be able to solve it. Uh, the way I'm going to solve it actually is going to be uh, slightly unusual in the following sense. Uh, so, solve the OD. And just to save some time uh, solving this, let's observe the following thing. I'm going to use uh, the substitution. Uh, u is equal to t minus t. So the temperature of the environment is a constant. So then if I take a derivative, u prime is t prime because the derivative of the constant is zero. And so then my ODE is going to look like what? Uh, t prime is the same as u prime equal to minus k u. And that is the same equation as uh, the one for the radioactive uh, for the radioactive decay. And 
for that one, we know already what the solution is. So u must be equal to u at the time 0 times e to the minus kt. And in this case, so recall what u is. So u is t minus te. So t minus te should be equal to uh, u0, so temperature at the time 0 minus te e to the minus kt. And uh, so then the outcome is this. If I solve for t, t is te plus t0 minus te e to the minus kt. Right, and that is uh, your solution of the Newton's law of cooling. Uh, now, I can try to remember this expression in the following way. Uh, so, first of all, um, if we wait for an uh, infinitely long time, uh, then of course the temperature of the body is going to equilibrate with the temperature of the environment, so when T is very big, then we expect that uh, when time is very big, we expect that the temperature is going to be the same as T. If I look at the expression that I just found, uh, if time goes to infinity, then exponential is going to be a exponential to the large negative power that is very close to zero. So as time goes to infinity, the limit would be equal to t. And if time is equal to zero, exponential is going to be one. So then t is t e plus t zero minus t, which is t zero at the initial temperature. Now, uh, given this solution to the Newton's law of cooling, now you can use it again to solve uh, practical problems. So in particular, let's try something like this. Uh, let's say, uh, suppose uh, that uh, the temperature of the cup of coffee or let's use tea uh, when freshly poured is say 90 degrees Celsius Uh, suppose that the cup is then taken outside uh, where the temperature is zero degrees Celsius. Uh, and let's uh, suppose that we're also know uh, that after uh, 10 minutes, uh, the temperature of the cup is 80 degrees Celsius, uh, then what is the temperature after 20 minutes? Okay, let's try to answer this question. 
so what do we know in this case? We know that um, the initial temperature T0 is equal to 90 degrees Celsius. Uh, the cup is taken outside where the temperature of the environment is 0 degrees Celsius. Uh, the time is measured in minutes, so then I know that the temperature after 10 minutes is supposed to be 80 degrees. And the question is, do I know enough in order to figure out the temperature of a cup at any moment of time? Okay, so from uh, the general equation for the Newton's law of cooling, what do we know? We know T0 and TE. So then T must be TE0 plus T0, 90 minus T minus 0, E to the minus KT. So this, uh, when simplified, is just 90 E to the minus KT. And uh, so then... Temperature after 10 minutes is supposed to be 80 degrees on one hand. On the other hand, I'm going to get it from here when t is equal to 10. So this is the same thing as 90 e to the power minus k times 10, which I will write as 90 e to the minus k to the power 10. All right, and then this can be solved for e to the minus k. Notice that I'm doing exactly the same thing as I did for previous uh, problems. Uh, so if I solve for e to the minus k to the 10th, uh, that is going to be 8 ninths, 80 over 90, which is 8 ninths. And so taking a 10th root of both sides, e to the minus k is 8 ninths to the power 1 tenth. So now I know e to the minus k, so therefore t of t, which is 90 e to the minus kt, that is 90 e to the minus k raised to the power t, which is 90 times 8 ninths to the power one tenth, right? That's e to the minus k to the power t. And so this should be equal to 90 times 8 ninths to the power t over 10. Uh, so this gives me temperature as a function of time. So then after 20 minutes, t of 20 minutes, this is 90 times 8 ninths 20 over 10, which is 90 uh, times 8 ninths quantity square. Uh, let's see if we can uh, make this uh, somehow um, an easier expression, right? So one of the nines I can take out uh, and divide 90 by 9, so this would be 10 times 8 square over 9, and then uh, 8 squared times 10 is 640 over 9. So that's temperature after 20 minutes, uh, 640 over 9 uh, is maybe between 65 and 70. So after 20 minutes, the temperature will drop uh, below 70. Okay, so that's Newton's law of cooling. Uh, the moral of the story is that uh, just like for the radioactive decay and for the bacterial growth, once you solved your linear ODE, you have a prescribed expression uh, that you can then use to solve various practical problems like I'm doing here. So in uh, problems uh, where you deal with Newton's law of cooling, in principle, you don't need to 
solve all the e's, you can assume that the temperature evolves according to the equation that is circled, and then the only thing that you need to do is to identify what the videos constants here are. Uh, either identify them directly or you need to solve for them, just like I'm solving for e to the minus k in the latest example. Okay, so the last type of um, problems that uh, we're going to deal with, another linear problem about rates, is a problem of the following type. Uh, let's suppose that we have a pool or a vessel of some sort and uh, you have water flowing in this vessel, flowing in and then flowing out. Uh, so let me just write down this in words and then we'll label the picture. So suppose uh, uh, that the pool initially uh, contains uh, 1,000 gallons or maybe make it liters uh, of pure water. Uh, let's suppose that uh, a brine a solution with a salt concentration of one gram per liter. Suppose that it enters uh, the pool uh, at the rate of three liters per minute. And the well-mixed solution leaves the pool at the same rate. Here's a question. How much salt is in the tank at time t. All right, so let me finish uh, labeling this. So there is a, there are a thousand liters of water in the tank. Now, initially it's a pure water uh, then uh, salt enters in and uh, the solution becomes more and more salty. Uh, what do we have? We have it three liters would enter the tank. Oops. Three liters is a rate of inflow into the tank. And each liter contains uh, one gram of salt per liter then uh, the amount of uh, water that leaves the tank, the outflow per minute is the same, three liters per minute, which means that actually the total amount of water in the tank remains the same. So the total volume of water is unchanging. Uh, so the question is, how much salt is going to leave the tank? So I know that one gram comes in into the tank uh, and uh, the well-mixed solution leaves the tank. So I have to figure out what is the concentration of salt in that well-mixed 
solution. Uh, so how would we approach this? So let's suppose that the concentration of what uh, of salt in the tank at the time t or in the pool at time t is c of t uh, if i knew the c of t would i be able to find how much salt is in a tank at the time t the answer is yes because how concentration is related to the mass is um, uh, mass is concentration times uh, volume. So then m of t is equal to 1000 times c of t is going to be the total mass of salt inside the tank. So I may choose to work with C of T or M of T, and the only distinction between them is that uh, one is uh, 1,000 times another. All right, so what is the concentration of salt? Concentration of salt is amount, mass of salt per unit volume. So in this case, volume is measured in liters. Uh, so let's think about this again. Salt enters the pool, then it is get, then it gets really well mixed, so that the concentration is constant throughout uh, the volume of the pool, and then the well mixed mixture is going to leave the tank at three liters per minute. But what is the concentration of salt in the tank? It's C of T, so that means that each liter that uh, leaves the tank uh, brings with it. Uh, concentration uh, of one times the concentration of uh, salt in the tank. So the concentration of salt in the mixture that leaves the tank is C of T. Okay, and with that, we can now uh, figure out the rate at which the amount of salt in the tank is going to change. Uh, so M prime of T, right? Total amount of salt, uh, rate of change of a total amount of salt in the tank. This should be equal to, uh, so the amount of salt increases due to the inflow and decreases due to the outflow. So this should be inflow of salt minus outflow of salt. Uh, what is the inflow of salt? Three liters come in per minute and each liter contains one gram of salt. So this would be three liters per minute times one gram per liter. So that would be three grams per minute. What's the outflow minus? Uh, three liters, again, leave per minute. And each liter contains C of T uh, grams per liter. And so we end up with the following equation. M prime is equal to three, that's an inflow, minus of t c and that is outflow free c of t and if this makes sense now i have two unknown constants two unknown functions here m of t and c of t but we said that those are related so i can replace uh because c is um uh m divided by 1000 or m is 1000 times c I can always replace C by M over 1000 or uh, vice versa. So let's replace C. So 3 minus 
B times M of T over 1,000. Okay, so that is um, the equation that governs uh, the change of M inside the tank. And we also know that initially we have um, 1,000 liters of pure water, so that means that initially there is no salt in the tank. So we need to solve an, the initial value problem. IVP for salt in the pool for the amount of salt is M prime equal to 3 minus 3 over 1000 M, right? That's the equation from the bottom of the previous page. And M of 0 is equal to 0. Uh, now, I'm going to next solve this uh, initial value problem, but there is something that I should be able to predict about the solution of this initial value problem as time goes to infinity. As time goes to infinity, what do I expect? There is always uh, the water with the same concentration that enters the tank, uh, so eventually I would expect to see inside the tank the same concentration of one gram per meter, uh, per, per liter, as a concentration of salt in the water that answer, enters the tank. So if a tank contains 1,000 liters and it has 1 gram per liter, uh, then the total amount of salt in the tank is going to be 1,000 grams or 1 kilogram. So I know that prior to solving anything. And uh, we'll use uh, this knowledge to check if the solution that we found is reasonable or not. Uh, all right, so how do I solve the equation? So you can actually see that the equation is of two types. It's uh, linear, one side being 3 over 1000 m uh, onto the left side, but it's also separable because um, the right hand side looks like a function of m times a function of t, except that the function of t is equal to 1. So I should be able to separate variables if I want to. But I'm going to solve it as a linear equation, so uh, m prime plus 3 over 1000 m is equal to 3. So this is a non-homogeneous uh, linear equation of the first order. Uh, it's already in a standard form, so I can find the integrating factor. Mu of t is e to the power integral 3 over 1000 dt, right, because function p of t in this case is 3 over 1000, and so that is e to the 3t over 1000, right, because integrating a constant gives me the same constant times t. And in this case, then we know that if I multiply both sides of the equation by the integrating factor, so then e to the 3t over 1000 times m quantity prime, that should be 3 e to the 3 t over 1000, because both sides are multiplied by, by the integrating factor. And so then integrating e to the minus, e, e to the 3 t over 1000 m should be equal to the 3 times integral of e to the 3 t over 1000 dt. Uh, and of course exponential is easy to integrate, so we still have 3 outside. Uh, e to the power uh, constant times t, when you integrate you get 1 over the constant times the same exponential. So 3 times 1000 over 3 e to the 3t over 1000. Uh, plus a constant. Now, there is the same exponential both on the left and the right, so I can divide by it. Uh, and also there is a coefficient of 3, which I can cancel out. So then, what I'm going to get is that m of t is 1000, right? Again, 3 goes away and the exponential cancels out, plus c e to the minus 
fifty T over one thousand. So what we will see is uh, again because the power is negative. As t goes to infinity, then the exponential will go down to zero. So m for v large t essentially is going to be one thousand as expected. And now we just need to satisfy the initial condition. So m of zero, on one hand, no salt in the tank in the beginning. On the other hand, it is 1000 plus c e to the zero, which is one. So then c is minus 1000. And so finally, what we get is m of t is 1000 plus minus 1000 uh, e to the minus 3t over 1000. And that's the amount of uh, salt in the tank at any moment of time. Uh, just to verify if t is equal to zero, right, then exponential is one, mass is zero, as it should be. And when t is infinity, all of this is gone, and you have 1,000 grams remaining in the tank. All right, so uh, this covers basically uh, all types of problems that we're going to uh, consider in this section. So next time, I'm going to move on to the next section.